bioinc.org. Um, yeah, so one thing that we've been talking a lot about these days is repro reproducibility. And I think it's one of these fashion words that have been used in the whole last year, I think. And it doesn't seem to be slowing down, so everyone, everyone wants to have reproducibility. And uh, yeah, we have lots of workflows, and that's a really good way of being reproducible. You've written down exactly what you did, exactly which programs you were using, and it's very easy usually to send them to someone else so you can create them. Uh, the problem with workflows and uh, programs like that is that you also have dependencies. You need to have the programs that they are talking about in the workflows, you need to have exactly the right version, and if you don't, sometimes it doesn't work. And it might be really tricky if you have a different Linux version, because you're missing a library somewhere. So things that the developer didn't think about. Uh, you will also need to have exactly the same reference data if you're using a different version of the uh, DBSNIP or uh, RefSec data. You might miss things. You would probably get a different result than if you were writing a paper. So, uh, what we want to aim for is portability. It should be possible just to send a file or yeah, perhaps a large file, but to be able to send it to someone else and they should be able to run it very easily and it should give exactly the same result as you got. And it should detail all the steps that you did. And one very good way of doing this is by using virtualization. So if you can package a virtual machine that contains all the data that you need for your pipeline or workflow, uh, all the programs, exactly the right versions, everything, maybe you boot it up, you get to a desktop, you double click run.sh, it just works. The results will be on the desktop a couple of hours later. That you can do with virtualization. So you can just package the whole operating system, or maybe use a Docker image, and uh, just squeeze in all the programs that you need. Uh, in the, uh, this side, buy-in, we don't really care which, which type of virtualization it is. As long as you can virtualize it somehow. We host files, more or less. We don't really care about the content. <coughs> Uh, one downside with virtualization is that there are many different projects doing this. So you have BioLinux, uh, Shipster has a virtual image, I saw that Cloud Gene also has a virtual image. Uh, they're all distributed on different sites, so there's no one central repository you can go and download these images. There are places like here, yeah, Amazon Marketplace, that have a large collection of images. It's really good. You can search for bioinformatic images, you can find BioLinux, you can find yeah, images that people have just published. The downside with the Amazon marketplace is that you have to fire them up on Amazon. You can't just download the file and start it on your local computer. So that's kind of what we want to get around. So uh, you might have heard that we're trying to develop a cloud solution at Docmax. We're going to use OpenStack for this. And to be able to use OpenStack, you have to have images. And we thought, well, we should probably supply a list of images that our users can use, so they can just click and get going. And if we're going to start doing that, we might as well make it public. Why not? Someone else might find use of this. And we would prefer to host them locally as well, because if you have a link, you know what happens with links. They get old, the content disappears, you always have to keep updating it. But if we host the files as well, then we have uh, the registry, with all the links to the files, and we also host the files. So if you can see one page, you can also download the file as well. It's not like the home page will be there and the files will not. So it's just an open catalog for virtual machine images. Anyone can upload files. Anyone can download files. Uh, it's structured around Django. I wanted to run Django and I've used it before, so I thought, well, this is a perfect project to start with. And it was, it was nice, it was a pretty simple structure. So we group everything on the first flavor. So is it BioLinux? Is it Chipster? And when you go into one of those categories, you can see uh, a couple of different versions. Maybe it's version 7.0 or BioLinux, maybe it's version 8.0. And for each version, we also have something called a group. It's called a group because it's completely up to the user what you want to name them. So in some cases, you might name them after the uh, virtualization platform, so virtual box images. Then you have all the virtual box files for this flavor version there. 
or maybe you name them uh, supplementary files you keep all the supplementary files there it's completely up to the one uh, constructing, constructing the image and it's free to use we have plenty of space at Topmax so even if we would have 50 different flavors and each of those would have maybe 10 different versions and each file would be I don't know, on average 100 gigabytes that's still just 50 terabytes and that's just my problem and if we're ever going to reach a point where we don't have enough, enough storage space that's a bit of a luxury problem that was so popular so I guess it's not going to be any problem to find funding to get more so this is how it, how it looks in the comfort page you'll get it by this list of flavors so if you're interested in this one just click here you will go into that category or if you want to look here at BioLinux, for instance, you just click BioLinux. And here you get a bit more information about it. And here we have one of these boxes per version. And inside each version you have these tabs, which are the groups. So in this case, they're grouped on uh, uh, ISO, the file format. So it's more or less the, uh, maybe a live CD that you can boot. Or uh, OVA, Open Virtualization Format. Yeah, some more information you can write which operating system it's based on. You can, if you click on the information sign here, you get a bit more information about the file. So the size of the file, the hash sum of the file, and where it's downloaded from, and who uploaded it. <coughs> and if we look at the back end, how it works is that you have users, like you and me, and we connect to a web server running this portal and since OpenMux is a bit paranoid when it comes to web things they don't really want to connect anything that has to do with the web to their clusters and their precious files so this is running on a completely separate computer and then we have a small daemon running on OpenMux that queries this web server is there any new files that I should download and if a user has been there and said I want you to download this file OpenMux computers will start downloading that file the reason why we don't use just attach a file and press send is that the uh, virtualization files are usually many gigabytes and you don't really want to post a yeah, multi gigabyte file over the web browser. So the way it works is that you supply a URL for the file so that OpenX computers can download it from there. So you have to make the image accessible to the web. It's just a URL. And uh, yeah, the, the backend can download multiple files at a time, um, supports resuming if both servers are supported. So it should just be paste the link and uh, it should just start downloading and publish it when it's finished. Yeah, so here are all the remote web servers. And then when the users want to download a file, they go to this portal. When they click a link, the link goes to this place over here that will contain all the large files. So it's not more than that. It's not a complicated thing. It's pretty easy. It's just a collection of links, more or less, and hosting all the files. And the people that's been working on this is me. I've been doing most of the backend work, from writing the Django things and uh, the Emo Defense of Max. And then I have uh, Frederick. He, he's not here today, is he? No, he sits on the fourth floor, and he does a lot of development on the OpenStack project. And he's been doing mostly on the front end. Uh, JavaScript and all those. And then uh, Matt Pimentel, who was here this morning, is the one uh, filming this whole event as well. Has done the design. Then we have funding from all bio points inside our lab, and Ola here has also been involved with the planning and structuring. So, do you have any questions? Yes. So, <coughs> how do you uh, verify the image if an image contains a vector? If I upload an image into the vector and then your biomedical practice to spread it? Yep. Uh, we don't do any validation at all of the images. So it's kind of up to the people. Uh, that's why we have the origin of the file specified as well. So if you click the information of a file, you can see that this is downloaded from sketchurl.com. Then maybe you shouldn't download it. But if it's downloaded from shipster.fi, then you could probably be quite sure that it's the original file. You also have checksums. If you have the checksum of the original file and your your file differs, someone might have tampered with it. But we take no guarantee of the content of the images. Oh, okay. uh, 
Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so as, as I understand, it's it's more or less a, a, a repository for virtual machines. Yeah. So you don't provide an environment to run those virtual machines. No. So so then, for example, if I want BioLinux, why don't I go and just download it from the BioLinux website? What 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 is what is the features that you are offering, which? Uh, yeah, the, the, the main feature is that you don't have to go to the bio Linux site to download it, because if you want to try a different image, you would have to go to yet another site to download that one. And then you have to go to a third site if you want to download yet another one. Here okay. is that you go to one place to download all the images, and they're collected mm. in yeah, one place where you can kind of compare them. You can at least read their own descriptions of their images. So we have to collect them more or less in one place, so you don't have to sit in Google for bioinformatic virtual images and find lots of results that might be outdated. Or mm. And so far it is free if I want to make my uh, my own image and publish it, it is free of charge uh, yeah. regardless of the size of the image. Yeah, pretty much. Always, always a practical limit. But mm. yeah, how, how big is the shipster? That's 200 gigabytes. That's not the answer, I don't think. Mm. Well, we had a last question. Yeah, so a very nice presentation, and I think the, the site looks very nice as well. But do I understand correctly, so this would be like similar to Array Express with the Omnibus, but for the virtual images rather than Array Day? Uh, I haven't been to any of those sites, unfortunately. You know, if you publish a micro experiment, you need to deposit the data at, at, yeah. at Array Express, for example. And if I publish a paper and I have a, a virtual image attached, this is the site where I want to deposit it. Yeah. Mm. I would say yes, I would say, yeah. knowing Array Express. Mm. Okay. Thank you a lot, and uh, let's move on.